consider whether the average treatment effect is identified in the following example. So imagine we're thinking about a y variable that is somebody's commute time, how long it takes them, we'll assume they drive uh, to work, and x is a dummy variable for whether or not it is raining that day. So imagine further that we're interested in this relationship in Columbia, Missouri, which is where I live and where the University of Missouri is. And imagine here on the horizontal axis we have the x variable, dry or rain, and then on the vertical axis we'll have commute times. Now during the summer here there are not a lot of students around so on a given day there's not too much traffic and we could imagine maybe if it's dry we get a commute time down here and if on the exact same day holding everything else constant except the weather it were to rain we would get a somewhat higher commute time. So in other words, this is our untreated potential outcome and our treated potential outcome for summer. And we could imagine other days maybe it's you know slightly lower, slightly higher, um, but something in that general qualitative pattern. And we'll note that yt minus yu is greater than zero. So in other words, the true treatment effect or causal effect of rain on commute time is positive. If it's raining, it takes longer to drive to work, which makes sense. So far, fine. During the semester, imagine maybe some day in early September, there's lots of students around, there's a lot more traffic. So on that same day, again, holding all else equal, maybe we get an untreated potential outcome commute time down there, and treated potential outcome up there. Again, other days, maybe it'd be a little higher, a little lower, uh, but that general pattern so again, we can see the true causal effect of rain on commute time, so the treated potential outcome minus untreated potential outcome is positive, uh, so rain makes commutes longer, if that makes sense. We'll also notice that because of this extra student traffic, both the untreated potential outcome and the treated potential outcome are higher during the semester than during the summer. Now here's where the identification problem comes in, in particular for that unconfoundedness assumption. So if we were able to randomize whether it rained or not during the semester and during the summer, then we could sort of get even parts of treated and untreated outcomes in both the summer and the semester, and then we could estimate the true ATE uh, properly. The problem is that here in Columbia it rains more in the summer than during the semester. So to make it more clear, we'll make it a little more extreme, we could imagine it only rains during the summer and it never rains during the semester. So the problem then is that our x variable is not independent of our potential outcomes. When we have low potential outcomes, we end up getting x equals 1, and when we have high potential outcomes, we end up getting x equals 0, and observing the untreated
potential outcome. So what we end up seeing is this and this. So it looks like there's a negative effect of rain on commute time with a downward sloping line there. Uh, but the problem is that the ATE is not identified. In particular, looking at that mean difference, we cannot interpret that with any causal meaning in this case because our second identifying assumption fails.